everybody and welcome back to Hank's Think Tank. i uh, got a good show for you today. This is a little different than what we normally do, but i got Mark Hogan with me here again. Hello everybody. And uh, we have today with us uh, Mr. Jonathan Mitchell. He is a candidate for Congress, the Texas 8th Congressional District, uh, and the uh, date is November 8th, 2022 is election date, right? Yes, sir. Well, welcome to the show, Jonathan. And... Uh, you know, you've taken on a big deal, man. Running for Congress is big. I know you've got 11 other repo- uh, opponents, and all of them are Republicans. Crowded, yes, sir. Crowded so, uh, field. Yeah. Already. Yeah. And, so, and, who, and whose seat was that, that, that? Kevin Brady's. Kevin Brady's. Yeah, he was so there for 30 years, right? Really? Yes, sir. Uh, since 96, 97. Yeah. Yeah, and just decided not to run again, huh? Yes, got, sir. Got tired? retired. How old is he? About 900? <laughs> not too sure, to be honest. He uh, he announced his retirement a week after I filed. Really? Yes, sir. So it, it came pretty inter- uh, interesting to me. I yeah. was not sure of who was going to be entering and who wasn't. Um, I ended up calling his campaign manager. Just ended up being a small world. Uh, I went out to Trinity, started campaigning, and one of the guys there at a auction base, um, he said, hey, I got his campaign manager's number if you want it. And I said, absolutely love to talk to him love to talk to him and kevin brady if i'm able to yeah and just get some insight seeing what i'm up against and seeing uh how things are kind of ran on that that side Mm -hmm. and how'd that go well we went and had coffee and uh i don't know it was kind of new to me so i didn't meet up with kevin brady just met up with uh rick craig and Mm -hmm. got his insight and he said uh, it's gonna be about a two million dollar race that's what stuck out to me i was like oh "Oh, yeah that's crazy. I would right. think you'd have to raise that much money. Yes, sir. And that's what he was saying. So, you, you're going to need that. Uh, back in my head, I was like, you know, if it takes someone that kind of money, I really don't trust them in, in office. If it takes you that kind of money, that much money to raise. Yeah, that's about standard, though. Yes, you sir. Know? And I'm like, man. Try running for president. See what you oh, no. That. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little bit too much yeah. out of my league. Yeah. Um, so, but everything went good. We, uh, we said about 30, 40 minutes there in uh woodlands yeah and kind of part of ways and then i seen them again at the uh, Re- uh reagan dinner there yeah. in uh huntsville at walker, walker county okay we didn't say much there because he was with uh kevin brady and the whole his whole team and whenever the next time i saw him was at uh, the reagan dinner there in um uh, uh, grimes county we actually talked and i ended up meeting with uh morgan latrell who is the opponent Right, mm-hmm. one of them. Yeah, he's yeah. one yes, of them. Sir. I he saw was that. One of them. And yeah. at the time, he wasn't. He was talking about it, and I was talking with Christian Collins, because mm-hmm. we just kept running into each other. Me, me and Collins was, and uh, he, he, I asked him. I said, "Hey, is that Marcus?" And he said, "No, that's Morgan." I said, "I didn't know nothing about Morgan. I didn't know he had a brother." He said, "No, that's a twin he brother." He was a Navy SEAL too. Yes, sir. Yeah. Really? Was, uh, Both of them are SEALs. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Fourteen years. Well, wow. um, he actually, him and Dan Crenshaw were teammates really same team yes sir yeah so, crenshaw is the guy right with the patch yes sir yeah, with the patch yeah. yes sir so it's going to be pretty interesting going against him however he his campaign manager is craig uh, craig welling uh, okay that's kevin brady's campaign manager so okay. he left the brady campaign and went to the trails wow so i'm actually going against somebody that has somebody in his corner that knows what's actually going on and how to do it right yeah yeah, but you'll find people along the way. Yes, sir. I, I mean, f- it's just, yeah, it's just going to take some time. Yes, so. sir. I found some people that want to help. However, they're out of state. I'm not. I really need somebody that's going to be here. Right. Yeah, so. you need a local person. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, maybe there's somebody online here that can, you know, send a, a message or something and let you know. And That'd who knows? Great. There's a lot of good people that watch this podcast. Yes, sir. So what made you decide to bid for Congress of all things? I mean, you could have started small you know maybe been a boy scout rep or something like that <laughs> yes sir you know, <laughs> congress is a long ass way now i ran for a board position for the east montgomery county improvement district okay uh back a year or two ago how did that and, go uh, i lost yeah you know, got the crap beat out of me <laughs> but, but you tried yeah i mean i tried and, and i learned a whole lot from that experience and that's really what i think i was out to gain and actually this podcast and a bunch of other things that I do were the birth child of that of that run. Yes, sir. Um, but it was a year long deal, and it went on forever, and and it was tough, you know. 
So I can only imagine what a bid for Congress would be like. It's so I'm, I'm curious, though, and I was talking to Mark about this a little while ago. When you filed, was there any kind of a vetting process or anything? Do you, do you get vetted at all before you are able to throw your name in the hat or no, just sir. go with it? They just got the basic requirements of uh, are you got to be 35? Uh, 25. 25 for 25 Congress. 25 for Congress. Congress. Yeah, yes, sir. Can you imagine that? And um, it's just a couple forms you can do online, send yeah. them in and online, and then uh, just wait for the response. Yeah. And that was it. I actually got my candidate number, my campaign number. So you got to file the form one. Mm -hmm. um, once you do that through your uh, campaign committee, right? then you can do your candidacy. Mm -hmm. And then that's basically all it is. It might take wow. 30 minutes to an hour to fill out. Okay. It's not long. So that was about it. And then... Uh, once they approved it, and then I was actually, uh, I called the TEC, so that's with the FEC. Mm -hmm. I called the TEC, and they said, no, you're, once you got your candidate number, you're able to uh, just throw it out there and that's actually cool. uh, start campaigning. So, so I see you've set up a website and obviously a Facebook page and probably yes, other sir. stuff that I didn't see, too. So I've, I've been trying to set up, uh, I've been told about Twitter and the Instagram. I haven't really gotten into that yet, just been working so much. Um but I've been working on my website, just slowly here and there, yeah. changing it. I had someone set it up. I had a campaign manager. However, uh, things was going on with her mm -hmm. uh, her son. So I told her, just, hey, kind of step away. And then she called me. Hey, I'm going to try to fumble, you know, both. I said, no, you need to worry about family. Family's first. So worry about that. I can I can handle my campaign for right now. Right. And uh, so she set up my, before she left, she set up my website for me. And I just kind of went through and started changing it. Now I'm getting mm -hmm. feed. I'm starting to get feedback now on it. Like, That's hey, good. Grammar here. You're talking first person here, third person there. And I wasn't catching it because how she she wrote it was all third person. I try to change it up to uh, first person. So mm -hmm. right. It's just a little bit I'm, I'm catching here and there. And that's uh, okay. Missing. Yeah. So why the bid for Congress? I mean, why Congress exactly and not something else? So for Congress, I, d I debated between state and Congress and federal. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm going federal is just I can get more done there. Um, I want our constitution reinstated completely. So uh, with all these, um, all the bills that they're they're passing, in like going after our Second Amendment censorship, mm -hmm. uh, trying to force us right now with the vaccine. I'm just I've had enough. So with uh, the reason I went that route was everything that's going on with COVID. Since mm -hmm. I work in the oil and gas industry, I kind of just got tired of everything. They shut down the whole state. And, right. Uh, so with, yeah with that shutting down the churches and uh i was fortunate enough to be able to continue working epic uh was the gas company i was with and i said we're not shutting down we're gonna keep going and i was getting phone calls from a lot of the people i worked with in the past up in west texas and i said we're not working there ain't nothing going on right now so right uh with that and how they handle the COVID situation that was just kind of like the stepping stone the next was the um the election of last year and mm -hmm. how they handled that that was just disastrous yeah rules were out the window it seemed like in a lot of states and yes sir um, and it was just ridiculous on how they handled it so and they kept talking about these audits well now we're doing the audits well mm -hmm. before all they did was the recounts and now I'm, I'm seeing people say well that was already an audit well no an audit it's actually going through everything a recount is right. not going to change anything yeah. so and then uh, the next stepping stone was whenever Biden took office and shut down the Keystone. That affects me and the rest of my pipeline brothers and sisters. Right. So. Yeah, I know Keystone's a big deal for people in the oil business. Yes, sir. Shut down uh, yeah. tens of thousands of jobs. And then after the fact, after once it had been completed, there's hundreds, if not thousands of jobs that would have maintained the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Talk it, about a trickle down effect. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, sir. And then. Uh, all petroleum products would have been cheaper that way. Fuel prices, uh, any plastics, anything made by products. Right. Would have been and the cheaper. constitutional angle on that whole thing, besides whether or not you like oil and gas and all that other kind of stuff, is uh, how can anybody just wave a wand and say, okay, you're all out of work. All the agreements and contracts you had are null and void by decree of me. You know, liberty's got to count for something. Yes, sir. And he, he took office and he talked about... Uh, dictators signing papers and he just started executive order after executive order and then uh the last the last thing that kind of put me over the edge 
was the Second Amendment pitting David Chipman, trying to pit him in the head of ATF. Mm-hmm. So whenever I've talked to other, I got Democrat friends and liberal friends. I try to be friends with everyone, mm-hmm. and uh, they said, "Really, he's not going after our guns?" I said, "No, he's going after them." Well, just AR-15. I said, "Well, what rounds an AR-15?" They can't answer it. I said, "I can list off 10. Right? Yeah, because so, it's a platform. It's not a round. Exactly. Yeah. So I right. said, when you're going after a platform, you're going after every single round that's in there, too. Mm-hmm. I said, so he's going after the guns, not just a gun. And I can see that it would be easy to write into, you know, let's get rid of everything that fires a two twenty three. Let's get rid of everything that fires an, even a 9. Mm-hmm. You know, and so now you've gotten rid of a bunch of handguns and everything else also. Yes, sir. So, yeah, we get, we need to be really careful about the way those laws are written. I agree with that. Yes, sir. You so, know. so I heard the other day, you know, the First Amendment was to guarantee our freedom of speech, and the Second Amendment was in case the First Amendment goes bad. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. Yes, but okay. So I got I got all that. That sounds about right. You know, I think it takes a pretty patriotic person to decide to run for Congress. So, <clears throat> have you had any public speaking engagements or anything yet? No, sir, not yet. Yeah, no. Everything's kind of been shut down because of COVID, and we're all coming back out of that now. So I can expect it's going to ramp up sometime soon. I'm hoping. So I've been told, uh, I've been invited to the Women's uh, Republican Party out in Walker County. Yeah, and I've done actually the Women's Republican Party thing uh, when I was running for MSED. It's really a great organization, and they'll yes, get you a long way. I'll tell you and what. you get them behind you. you take uh, yeah, advantage of force. every opportunity to, to speak in front of, I don't <clears> care how small a crowd, but attached to any kind of organization like that will help yeah, you. I would absolutely. Imagine. Yes, sir. Yeah, affiliate yourself in any way that you can. I've you know. been trying. Uh, it's pretty tough, just how you said, everything's being shut down yeah. right now. So it's trying to play along with those guidelines if yeah. anybody wants uh, to open up. Right. And then it's the on top of that with the mask mandate. The people that want to open up, they don't want the masks. So right. it's trying to deal with that right now. But I'm seeing... Well, no, like in Texas, I think masks are pretty much already off the shelf. They're, start it's to. already done, huh? Yes, sir. So, uh, well, I slowly. dropped somebody off at the Amtrak train <clears throat> station yesterday and oh, i thought you were i thought you were just that was a metaphor for like a yellowstone thing <laughs> <laughs> no nobody got hurt okay because okay. if you, you watch yellowstone you know the yeah. the train yeah, when dropping you said people you were taking away the train station like, oh okay i got yeah. it well, yeah. nothing like that it was a real train station <laughs> okay. downtown on washington well there is an amtrak train station yeah where do they go <sighs> well they're going to la on this run i'll be down yep but what I was getting at was all over the, the uh, all over the place, <clears throat> all over the windows, was several of the same sign and some different ones saying uh, the federal. How is it worded? It is federal law to wear a mask, and we enforce that here at Amtrak. And I thought I've got a problem with the way that's worded. But luckily, I wasn't going to have to go in and and test that whole theory. I know they would have thrown me it? out. I haven't seen a federal law that There's requires no federal law there. requiring masks. So they're just and, uh, that's a, a federal train entity. Yeah. And they can call their own shots. And I guess that's what they were kind of getting. And at. maybe it's ruled under the Transportation Security Administration, you know, TSA. Yeah. I would imagine. Yeah, probably. Yeah. It didn't have that little blurb on there anywhere, but it made me think of that. Wow. It, uh, it's like that at the airport right now as well. I went to uh, Arizona to go see a friend get married. Yeah, you got to wear a mask you on a plane. Wear a mask the whole time. And That's I crazy. had mine just kind of hovering right there, and they made me put it all the way up. And really? Then, yes, sir, unless I was eating. So they brought the the snacks out midway through, and then that was it. Just eat really slow. I, that's what I did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Extremely one, slow. One peanut every 10 minutes. <laughs> you come in with a Slim Jim hanging out of your mouth, you're fine. <laughs> so it, it was uh, – Weird seeing that actually going in, going in and seeing that. I thought maybe that would have been done away with, but yeah, they're serious about it. Yeah, and air in uh, Phoenix where I landed, that they give you a whole pack. They don't just give you one. They give you a whole pack, and it's all cloths. It's not that uh, the cheap little uh, medical grade looking one. Right. Hmm. So, and I asked them. I said, "You sure a whole pack?" They said, "Yes, we don't uh, we don't share here." I said, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So how long is a congressional term? Is it two years or four years? It's two years. Two years? Yes, sir, with unlimited uh, terms, which I am completely against. I saw that on your website. Yes, sir. uh, So let's talk about term limits a little bit. So what would you like to see the term limit be? Uh, So without changing how long the term is, 
mm-hmm. just four four terms max. If you can get reelected four times, okay, four terms max. That makes it eight years. Yeah, uh, for the House, for the Senate, there's six year terms. Just limited that down to two years. I would, in a perfect world, I would like four year terms with only two two term limits, just like presidency. Yeah, as much as I would like. Uh, either either way, if I can just get eight years in the House. Mm-hmm. That would be ideal for me, just to keep the lobbyists out, right, right, and stop for the grid. Lobbyists. Yeah, because so. I've seen good people go in there, and <coughs> uh, you know they say great things, and then they they see all that money flashed at them, and got to play the game to, you know, get rich for fifty years and come out, and your whole family is all set up, and there's really a lot wrong with that, man. There really is. And, and do you think that it's terms that make that, that, I guess, easier for the lobbyists to? Because I know the lobbyists are really powerful organizations. Yes, sir. And they can probably come in and have a few conversations with a new congressman and get what they want pretty quickly, I would think. I, I wouldn't see how a lengthy term would make that big of a difference, other than the fact that it gives a congressman more time to accumulate wealth through that. Yes, you know, sir. Or hidden wealth, I should say. Hidden wealth. Yes, so, sir. So, <laughs> you know. But, I mean, I think... The availability of corruption is there from the minute you get elected, you know, especially in our government nowadays. And I hate to say that because I try to be as patriotic as possible, but anything that runs over time will become corrupt. It doesn't matter what it is. Yes, sir. I mean, religion, you name it, anything that is organizationally based is over time is going to become corrupted. Yes, sir. And Almost the, an overhaul of our system would be the better. Well, I'll tell you, that is a great start, though, to, to uh, rotate people <clears throat> out of that system and have some new blood in there with new ideas. I think new new ideas and new thinking is should be the, the reason for term limits. As right, and you're to, not in just a, a yeah. perpetual get reelected mode, you know, yeah. and needing the money that's coming in at you and, yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yes, sir. And that, that's kind of where I'm wanting to do four years. Is with the running. Uh, the reason being, every two years you're having to run, <clears throat> you're not you're not able to have or to get things done like you're supposed to legislate. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, you can't legislate because you're too busy trying to run a campaign. Exactly. And you're going to find out really quick how hard it is to run a campaign. I mean, it's a 24 hour a day deal. Extremely it's tough. tough. I'm sure yeah. you know it's a it's a yeah. mud pit. It really is. And right now with uh, how work's going for me, I'm uh, it, as little bit that I'm able to get on Facebook. I'm seeing other candidates, they're constantly posting. Yeah. But I'm like, man, you know, that would be nice. However, I'm running my whole campaign, but I'm also having to ru- uh, work the whole thing. Sure. So I'm working six, seven days a week yeah. and getting up five, six o'clock in the morning, and then I get home until seven, eight o'clock at night, and then still doing paperwork on top of that. It's pretty tough. Yeah, that's yeah. Quite, quite a load. You're going to have some situations where you need to, hopefully you can, you got some leeway to take off work and, and go to some functions or take care of some business when you need to. Yes, sir. So I had a company reach out to me uh, here recently, and they wanted to bring me on board. And it's supposed to start here in the next uh, couple of weeks, and it'll be uh, in Dallas five days a week, 10 hours, and then I'll be here on the weekends. Okay. So I said, you know what, that'll probably be the best way to best route to go for yeah. what I'm doing. Um, I've had other companies want to send me out to New Mexico right now. Well, that's not the <laughs> not the. You can't uh, do that long yeah. distance, man. I, I cannot. So if I can drive back and forth, that'd be that'd be the way to go. And I told them I I take them up on the offer. Yeah. That way I can actually manage my campaign and do it more efficiently. That's cool. Yeah. So. So you got kids? You married? No, sir. Not married. I have well, one 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 son. Uh, okay. He's seven. My little partner. So, cool. So uh, we you know, we try to do a hunting trip every year. Yeah. Um, if able, but here there lately with uh like last year. We did go on one last year. We we got a uh, Jacob's Four Horn out in Kerrville, and that was that was awesome. Okay. So he he was uh he was pretty excited. However, he wanted to uh, to take the animal. I was like, hey, but let's let's do another animal for you, because uh, I was there just doing archery, and he like was kind of upset about it. I'm like, man, I'm sorry, Bo, but let's get you a, a white tail. Let's get you something that's sure. starting starting off in this. Uh, and right now you're not strong enough to pull back a bow, and I want I want to get him into archery. Yeah, uh, nothing wrong with rifle hunting, but I, I see it more of a, a challenge with archery, and I, I kind of want to level up that playing field. So if you can shoot, makes sense. Yes, sir. Yeah, takes nothing to uh, get behind a rifle. So and I'm all for it, but 
again, I'd rather, I want that challenge there. I want mm-hmm. them to be able to yeah. feel more successful in that hunt. You're right. be a lot more stealthy and a lot closer, too. Yes, sir. So, so um, let's talk about the candidate pool for a second. You know, you got 11 other opponents. It's a lot. Yes, sir. And actually, that may work to your advantage in some situations. But, and they're all Republican, too. So if I was the average voter, um, what would make me pick Jonathan over those other 11 guys, you know? I mean, what's, so what's different, or what, what do you have to offer that maybe they don't? Well, how I've been looking, uh, I try to research a little bit on my uh, candidate, uh, the, the opponents I have. Okay. However, I don't want to spend too much time in that. Uh, right. I'm not big in that, because if I spend too much time in that, I can't spend time on my issues, my, my, my priorities. Right. So <clears throat> what I've found different from the other ones is I'm actually a blue-collar guy. I work pipeline. That's what I know. Uh, I actually know what it's like to be a common folk. Sure. Uh, never finished college. Went through high school, finished high school, and did a little bit of college. However, work, worker's priority. So I have more of that in common. Um, the other thing is with the term limits, only a few other has mentioned it. But the ones that have mentioned it, they're talking more like 24 years overall mm-hmm. in the House, 24 years in the Senate. That's a career politician. I'm not right. for that. I'm right. going to get in, make the changes that need to be made, and then I want to go right back to doing what yeah, I'm doing. Yeah, and they're probably them. looking at that benefits package because I looked at that, and that benefits package kicks in at 24 years, I believe. Yes, sir. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. All oh, yeah, this is a great benefit. The package. pension and the, oh, yeah. and the health care. Yeah, it's and, awesome. Yeah, yeah awesome. Yeah, I didn't know that. that. <clears throat> See, a lot of people are under the impression that once you become a congressman, you make that 174 for the rest of your life, and that's just a myth. It's, it's a 24-year yeah. threshold. Yeah, you need you need to be in X number of years before that's good, and and there's there's a whole bunch. It's tiered, mm-hmm. so there's a whole bunch to it. But the magic number again is, you know, 24 years of service, and basically no one in your family will ever have to work again. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. So I mean. And that's that's a good deal, I think. Even though I don't think congressmen work as hard as they should. No, you know, not at all. <clears throat> and I think they lose focus after X amount of years in office. Right. Yeah. Um, money starts talking to them, like like yeah. we were talking about earlier with the lobbyists. The whole idea, back to the Constitution, was citizen legislators. You leave your fields and your office, and you go and you work for the people, and you get the hell back to your Is your that, home. You yes know, sir. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm all about. I, I, I'm not wanting to stay in office forever. Um, right. You so want to go in, you want to make a difference and, and uh, pass get, some, on. Yeah, get something enacted that means something to the country and, yes, sir. and move forward. That's noble. Yes, sir. And yeah, that's, that's a good thing. all I'm about. So <clears throat> these other candidates, they're, they haven't really touched about that. Yeah. Um, Is anybody in the pool a career uh, politician that you know of? Not that I know of so far. Okay. I've known, uh, so there's two Republicans that's running. However, in the last election, they ran as Democrats. Uh, one okay. ran in the third district of Washington as a Democrat. He moved down here, and now he's running as a Republican. They call those carpetbaggers. Yes, sir. Let's see a juicy seat. <laughs> yeah. The other one. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. Yes, sir. The other one ran in Houston uh, as a Democrat last yeah. election. Now he's running as looking a for an easy seat. That ought to tell you something. Interesting. Yes, sir. So there's a few other guys that's moved here from out of state. Uh, whether or not they moved here to run for office yeah i'm not able to answer on that probably not yes sir there's uh yeah. someone made a wikipedia about it and saying that uh-huh. one guy actually did that he moved from out of state to here to run for office however he moved here from what they said was in 2019 i'm, I'm not able to justify that as in he ran for office that's <clears> why right. he moved here so yeah if that was the case he would have ran last election he did not so so let me ask you this and <clears throat> it's kind of a tougher question, maybe. There's a polarization that exists in Congress right now that inhibits anything from really getting done. So you've got, you know, half Republicans, half Democrats, and even in the event that there's good legislation on one side or the other, you know, the opposing side normally won't vote for it because they'd rather take a stand against that side than enact good legislation. So, what are your views on the polarization, and what will you do to try to reach across the aisle and see that good legislation gets enacted, even though you may be seen as a traitor to your own party? 
you know it's kind of a it's kind of a it's going to be a, a really hard rope to uh to walk on and it's going to be a hard way to navigate the waters you know yes sir but i think someone with a strong view on that is going to be important as far as a decision maker for whether you would vote for them or not at least for me it would be yes sir so what are your thoughts on polarization and and what would you do to try to either help fix it or at least make it more benign than it already is or than it is so that that is a tough one <clears throat> uh, not knowing what they're going to throw you know when we get there right. not knowing what they're going to throw at me or anybody else in the uh, in my party affiliation uh however how i am with voting on that would it, is it going to go back down to the basics to how is it going to affect the constitution if they're wanting something that's going to be constitutional uh, that's going to abide by the constitution okay well let's work we can work with something there mm -hmm. uh, and then i can see what i can do but i'm gonna have to reach back out to the people of the district and say hey look this is what they're offering up I'm not seeing that much often uh, until after the fact, after they're already getting ready to pass it or reject it either way. But to me, it's going to come back down, like I said, to the Constitution if it's going to go with my core values. It's going to go with my principles. Can right. I work with them? Can I? What can we do and what can we not do? Right. Um, cause a lot so you're of, willing then to reach across the aisle at least and and examine what's going on and not yes, just sir. and not just give that staunch no just because they're democrats yes sir i'm you willing know? to work because we have we have to get things done in the country right um but as long as it doesn't go against my like i said my constitution and doesn't go against my uh, principles then it's going to come up against my uh, conservative views okay how, how we're going to play it and how we're going to go mm -hmm. about it um yeah i need to know what's going to be best for the american people sure so not only am i voting for these uh, bills to get passed with through the district here, I'm voting for everyone else in the whole entire country. Right. So that's one. That's something I'm going to have to take into right. consideration. You can compromise exactly. on some details, exactly. but you can't compromise on the Constitution. I can. Yeah. I absolutely can't. And I've I've had that answer or had that question. If I can work with them on the the left side, and I that was a very tough one for me. I have no idea what they're going to be offering. Uh, right. But if it goes against the Constitution, I'm not able to compromise. Yeah, yeah you really won't know until you get there. Yes, sir. But it's a willingness that's important, I think. Yes, sir. I, I have know? to be willing to <clears throat> have things start moving into a, a forward path. Yeah. Um, right now, I see a lot of things getting passed by the Democratic Party, and the Republicans are just kind of sitting back. Um, they're not putting their efforts in. I'm not. I, at least I don't feel so. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's going to have to change. Something's going to have to give. Uh, I have been asked about changing views on certain things, and I can't, mm -hmm. uh, especially when it comes to the Constitution. Uh, one of the things I've been asked about was red flag laws uh, on the Second Amendment. I said I would never, not for it, never be for it. I want to abolish the ATF, abolish the NFA. Right. So if it goes against the Constitution and they're wanting to vote and have something passed, I'm, I'm sorry. How do you feel about Texas constitutional carry? You know, it got passed, and it's you know, going to come up September 1st. And yep. we actually did two podcasts about constitutional carry just recently. Yes, sir. I've seen that. I've been wanting to <clears throat> get back to them and actually been able to watch them. Yeah. Um, so I'm for it because it's for the Constitution. Right. Uh, I do think that it would be beneficial to anyone that's going to practice or um, go along with it to take some kind of training. Definitely. Sure. You know, it's only, it'd be beneficial to anyone <coughs> to take some yeah, kind at, of safety course. At minimum, just, you know, just gun safety. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Just gun safety. Seeing, yeah. uh, okay, well, because some of these people might be new to it. And I'm really surprised it got passed without that requirement. But it literally got passed, from what I can tell, with no requirement. It's just, yeah, gun, you're good. If you can buy a gun, you can do it. Yes, sir. The so. other one was, uh, which I love, <coughs> uh, they're going to have it where we can buy suppressors now here in Texas if mm -hmm. it's made here in Texas, which I, I love that. It goes around the NFA, which I'm yeah. all for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anything that's uh, any suppressor that's actually made here in Texas, everything manufactured here. So what's the difference be between a suppressor and a silencer, or, or is there a difference? There's, there's not. There's no, there's, it's there's just terminology. Same thing. Yeah. Yes, sir. One, and so and so there's not certain levels of suppression that you have to fall within no sir. so like if i wanted to build me a really good 
suppressor. I could do that. That I know of. Yes, well, sir. Cool. The, the manufacturers have, have different things they brag about, how quiet they can make a certain mm -hmm. firearm. But there's no official, uh, you know, parameters or any kind of threshold. Well, I can tell you right now, man, a good bacon potato, I can knock it down and down. <laughs> yeah, but your accuracy falls way off. Right? Way you off. don't need to be accurate this close. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you afraid of him hearing you anyway? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and I always thought suppression was, you know, that it would take some of the high end off the pop, but wouldn't really take it out down to, because the silencer, from what I can tell, will you know muff it down to almost nothing no so yeah. what you'll be doing on that you're you're the issue i'm having with nfa on that is you're talking about 20 to 30 decibels on average of yeah. what you're taking away so it makes the just hearing better you know yeah you, you can use you don't have to use hearing protection. in the fact they I call would, it the right. hearing protection act right? exactly yes yeah. sir they do and for me i think it's it's absurd to have to file a 200 dollars tax stamp go through them, have a waiting list, I think it's eight to 10 months right now. Yeah, good long time. Yeah. Exactly, and then you have to buy the suppressor up front. So mm -hmm. you get to go to the store, you look at it all day, but you can't do nothing with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, until they, they pass it, they register it. I think that's, I think that's absurd. Yeah, Same. buddy of mine's gone through all that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Same with uh, the SBR, uh, short barrel rifle. Mm -hmm. Once you start cutting down your barrel after 16 inches of a certain pro uh, projectile, you're losing ballistics. Sure. So well, you're going to change the ballistics. We cut an inch off. Exactly. So yeah. why why do I have to file a tax stamp for that? I, I don't agree with it. Um, I think a lot of it's just a way to get into your pocket. It is, and I think it's a lot of micromanaging throughout the government. They're going to create these uh, organizations and then start mm -hmm. micromanaging everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not for it. I want to abolish both of them. Get rid of them. They're going against our constitutional rights. So. So you're not a big government guy, I don't guess, huh? No. Um, very small government. And when I say small government, I want to abolish these organizations yeah. by the government. You can't be for small government and then back the ATF, the IRS, right. NSA, DEA. You can't be backing all these organizations and say, oh, I'm for small government. Yeah. I'm for small government. Um, at least not in my eyes. Right. And to yeah. me... That's how I feel. I want to abolish all these organizations. Uh, we have every one of them is going against our constitutional rights. So, and then they're, like you said, pickpocketing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not for that. And uh, I think as soon as we can start abolishing them, restricting them, that'd be the way to go. You know, re reinstating our constitutional rights to our forefathers. Boy, what a fight that right. will be. Yes, sir. Yeah, that, that'll be one for sure. Um, so, you know, as far as today's society goes, you know, we got all these different aspects aspects of society, such as cancel culture, and and uh, we're, we were talking earlier about a uh, critical race theory. Are you familiar with that? I am. And you know, I know a lot of these things it, have been going around already, and they're going to be they're going to be hitting legislation soon, maybe in your year if you were to get elected. So what are you going to do to guarantee that, you know, our kids aren't going to be indoctrinated into all kinds of weirdness and, and to try to quell um, a lot of these activities that are, you know, just too far out there on the ends, you know? And I mean, and maybe you won't be able to do that through legislation, but, you know, just as a, as a leader, I mean, what kind of stand are you going to take on those types of things? And how outspoken do you think you'll be on that? Or do you think you'll just kind of wait for legislation to come across your desk and, and go ahead and fight it with the pen? Uh, I'm not for waiting on anything, especially with me only wanting to be in for a couple of years, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of terms, I should say. There's no waiting. I have to be on the front lines of that. Uh, yeah. I'm against it. And it needs to be stopped. Uh, the other thing is, I think the federal government needs to get out of our education. Uh, put yeah, that back I agree towards, with that. Uh, uh, to the state, let the state handle it. There's no reason for our federal to be in, anywhere in that. They right. came out with the Common Core, uh, I think, when I was in high school, I think, something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was, it was ridiculous. Yeah. You know? Um, <clears throat> so. Well, you know, even when me and Mark went to school, I, I really don't think they were teaching us what we needed. You know, we, we were learning bullshit that we weren't going to use. I mean, I learned a bunch of crap that I wasn't going to use. Right. You know? And I think they would have been much better off teaching us life skills, you know, that you're going to use when you get out of school. 
And so the curriculum's always been, it's always been, I think, politically motivated one way or another. Yes, sir. And it seems to be getting more and more and more that way. And I think our kids are being indoctrinated. It's just, it's odd. They are. You know, it's really weird. Yes, and sir. so it makes me concerned about what kind of society we're going to have, especially being that me and him are, especially him, are older gentlemen. And, you know, we're going to need these <laughs> these young bucks to take care of us. Not one you bunch know, when of When I was your to. age, I'd get my ass whipped for talking <laughs> to somebody like that. Uh, I just, with me having a son, and he's seven, and going through school, there's something. Yeah, you're going to be right in the middle of it. I really that changes yeah. everything, doesn't it? It yeah. does, because your, your outlook on it. Without a kid, you're probably not thinking much of it. Nah, you know, you can brush it off. Right. But when you have a kid and he's going through that right now, oh, well, it, it changes everything. So, to me, I'm, I want him to learn his his math, his uh, his English, you know, reading, writing, uh, right. science, actual science, not this this push agenda that's mm -hmm. going on right now. So, right. And I want him to be able to get out of high school and actually be successful, whether or not he goes to college he can go to trade school or start right into you know uh, a job like i did right so another thing i one thing i would love for them to teach is how to do taxes how to file taxes life skills it's all right. life skills yes it's, sir. it's a sad commentary when you got all these kids that come out of high school and they're they're social warriors for this cause and that and okay that's fine but they can't balance the checkbook yeah they're idiots they don't you know. know how to sit in a job interview and leave their phone alone i mean come on man yeah you know, that's where i'm at you know yes, so sir. i'd like to see i'd like to see at least someone in an authority position take a real hard stand against that and at least try to do something about it but but it, it may just be the tide. It may be the way it's going, you know. Yes, sir. And I'm not so sure that anybody can put the brakes on the direction this country's already taken. Well, that's where you, you know? come in, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> the other so, thing I would uh And that, that may be your hook for the voters, too. Yes, sir. You know, because I think a lot of people feel the same way that I do. That, hey, what's the point? I still vote. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I vote. And I take as much time as I can to learn who the candidates are and what they're about. Yes, sir. But at the same time, I do have my doubts as to whether any individual can make enough difference to turn the ship around, yes, sir. even as far up as the president of the United States. But you know, I think just, just because it's such a large swamp to fight. Well, I really call it a machine, though, because I see it as it more is a of machine, a machine. Too, yeah. It's just such a large, multifaceted machine. With so many millions of components. That's I mean, geared all to protect itself. Yeah, yes, sir. It's crazy. You know, I, it's all driven by money and power and oligarchies. and. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was, uh, I've had that on my I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, uh, on the swamp, right on up. the whole issue. You know, yeah. Trump went in there with the whole message, we're going to drink the swamp. The Republican Party, I've seen them. I didn't think they actually backed him as as strong as they should. If if I think everybody's afraid of Trump because he was a nut. Yeah. You know, I, I, I mean, if I was a a Republican who had been a Republican for many years and I was concerned about my position, concerned about my constituency, it would have been hard to get me to back Trump because he was freaking crazy. I mean, really grab him by the pussy. I mean, you know, that, he said yeah. a lot of stuff that was like, wow, damn. You know, and if he wouldn't have done a lot of those things, I think his his backing would have even been stronger on the front end. Mm -hmm. It just took him years to finally get there to where, and by the time everybody supported him, it was over. You yes, know what sir. I mean? Yes, so, sir. so the, it was unfortunate the way it went for him, mm -hmm. but it was of his own doing in, in some cases, I believe. He, and, he threw out a lot of red meat for them to jump on. Hell yeah. But you know, you, you know what? It, he got stuff done, and he could have got a whole lot more yeah. done. His you policies can't, were great. You can't argue with the results, man. So that, that's you know? one thing. His results were awesome. And that's why I was backing him. Uh, I loved him for that. Yeah, he said some things. One thing I wish he would do or would have done is stayed off of Twitter. Well, that's a, I heard that a lot. You just, know, just if he would Break it down a little bit. People love that he, he fought against yes. all the yeah, BS. He's right? a Twitter guy, though. I mean, he was he a Twitter really guy is. long before his presidency, man. Yeah, you he know? is. And you know so, what? Long before their, his presidency – the mass media and everybody else and, and the New York politicians of any stripe love that guy. 
they loved his money and sure. they loved what he could do for them you know so uh, he, ran. he came down the escalator and it was just uh it's all over because he had an r behind his name yep yeah so well, i didn't i love like i said i love this message and wanted to drain the swamp i just wish that they would have actually helped Lindsay Lindsay graham flip-flops uh throughout the whole canvas and see mitch mcconnor did the same thing they're the ones that are to me are leading the republican party mitch mcconnor is for yeah. sure and uh to me i squishy get along to go along yeah. exactly and i i won't i would love to get rid of them all uh any any and to me it doesn't matter on what side of the aisle they fall on they need to go corrupts corrupt to me yeah and uh that's one thing i've been posting about on my facebook one of the last things i thought it was gonna be a good thing i posted i got kind of crickets <laughs> it was the um me calling out some of the uh endorsement interviews i've had uh-huh. i'm not i'm not going with them uh and their thing was their exact words were uh we're not lobbyists however whenever our donors want something passed or rejected we go to our candidate candidates mm-hmm. well that's a lobbyist you're buying the candidate yeah you're brokering for the lobbyists. exactly sure. so to me i'm not for it and they're a republican-backed endorser there's a lot of them out there that are for sale yes sir and ted cruz is finally coming out saying well i'm not gonna take their money anymore but why was you taking why was you taking their money in the in the beginning you know so mm-hmm. he's flip-flopping and i'm not sure how i feel about him you know with him doing all of that i've been told about uh some of the do- uh the deals he's had with other candidates to get them elected as well so yeah i'm just not for it and to me, it doesn't matter. Like I said, it doesn't matter what side of the aisle they are. I'll call them out. You're right. A crook is a crook. I exactly. don't care what they got by their name. Exactly. And that's the, that's the pill that the Republican Party is going to have to swallow. Yeah. You know, like, hey, look, yeah, you might like this guy, but he's a crook. Yeah. You know, we need to uh, replace him with somebody better. And that's that's how I want to go about the whole being in office mm-hmm. is just going about like that. If I have to call them out, I'm going to have to. If I'm going to have to not choose that is one of the questions as well is if the people that's in more of a higher seat in the republican party if they want me to vote a certain way will i go with the party views or will i stick with my principles and i wrote back said no i'm gonna stick with my principles it's going right. to go against my constitution like i was saying earlier and my principles that outweighs my whole entire party and i think that should have weighed like that for democratic party and the republican party regardless as they need to stick by that yeah before they put the views you know ahead of that so well if you um, end up winning that seat and we do wish you good luck we would like a right of a interview after you get settled in and see how it's going oh absolutely all right <laughs> don't yeah. forget us man no <laughs> no not not at all so i got one last question um you had mentioned that you know it's an average of i think two million dollars to run for for congress so yes, sir. what are your plans on raising that kind of money I've had that question. Um, I've had several people say, hey, you need to start asking. I'm not a beggar. I was never born uh, and raised to be a beggar. Yeah. So I'm working to pay for my campaign. If I can afford it, I can. If I can't, I can't. Um, but I won't put in the work. Uh, well, there's nothing wrong with having a fundraiser. Yeah, are you going to have a fundraiser or anything like that? Or you got anything no. planned for the future? Uh, you got to staff an office and you got to advertise. People have to know who you are. Yes, you know? sir. So the advertising I'm doing right now is just a little advertising that I can afford. Uh, when I'm actually able to get back working steady again, mm-hmm. I will be putting up some billboards. Something I'm, I'm moving out of uh, my apartment right now. I'm paying a little bit too much where I'm at. I'm going to move into a downgrade my apartment a little bit yeah. so that I can't afford Free more. up some money. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So I'm making some changes through my own lifestyle right now just to free up more money okay. uh, to run. Like I said, I'm not a beggar. and uh, But I know you're accepting donations like on your website. Yes, I'm, I'm, stuff, I'm so. accepting. Uh, yeah. What I'm asking more is if people can just spread my, spread my name out there, spread me out there and yeah. talk about me. Um, yeah. That's how I think it's going to be. Uh, yeah, because District Eight's actually pretty big. It's huge. So I it's saw all, that on a map. All, I couldn't yeah, believe it. It's man. all in Montgomery County, part of North Houston. Yes, sir. And, there's uh, eight yeah. counties in it. Yeah, and then part of others. So it's huge. Yeah. I think there's eight hundred, nine hundred thousand people, and four hundred of them, give or take, are yeah, voters. You need to do a lot of traveling. Uh, I, yes, sir. So when are they going to? When are they going to do the uh, the drawing for the the order? Oh, for the. 
like redistricting or for no, actually how it's going to be on the how it's going to come out on the ballot so i'm not sure yet uh yeah. i've been asking how everything's going to be taking place right now with the census mm -hmm. still isn't completed they they have to do uh, redistricting as well right we gain those two seats here in texas and i was talking uh to some other people uh and they was saying that we might actually have another seat here in, through montgomery county mm -hmm. is rumored however you know there's there's no telling until yeah. about after this uh, special session so probably gonna be september october before we even know uh, yeah what's coming and then in november we can actually uh put our petition in through the tc and pay our uh our dues yeah and, and do you know when um when they do the drawing for the ballot order no sir i don't yeah you need to find that out and see where they're going to do it at and go yes sir um when they did mine i was the only candidate there and uh you know, when the candidates are there, you have the choice of how they go about doing it. Okay. So it could be names in a hat. There's a bunch of different ways they do it. You know, they draw names out or they do like a lottery or something like that. Yes, sir. So go and make sure it's legit. Nah, you know, and you end, up, you end up where you want to be. Yes, sir. So, yeah, if you can get first, you've got an automatic, I think, either 6 or 16% gain that you get out of that. And that also goes for last as well. First and last are kind of about the same last is a little bit less than first okay but yeah somewhere in the middle of the road it's not all that great i never knew but, that oh yeah there's a lot of specs and stats on all that kind of stuff i do so, know uh because that's another thing i've been asked a lot about the primaries and when that's going to mm -hmm. be held and we're we're thinking it's going to be may or june of next year so my campaign has just went even longer <laughs> yeah. you know campaigning out there instead of running until february yeah March. And, and you know that that length of time that you'll be campaigning is probably going to work in your favor i think so i really so, do yeah you need to do everything you can to reach as many people as you can and get your story out yes sir so um yeah it's gonna be very very tough especially who i'm going against with yeah. all the backing that he has like i was worried before he entered the race on who's going to be my actual opponent mm -hmm. throughout the whole thing but once he entered it was a wash it was like you know what now i can focus on one person it actually helped in my benefit i can work i can just focus on one person sure and then go from there and yeah. see what he's doing and try to be everywhere he's being uh, yeah. as well however he's actually able to go everywhere right now while i'm working so and that's uh what's going on right now with the cpac yeah up in dallas mm -hmm. i'm seeing so many candidates up there that's from this district that's up there and i'm like man that'd be nice to be there however i'm stuck at work right now like I got you. Yes, sir. Yeah. So being yeah. at work today, yesterday, it was, I uh, got there at 6 a.m. to do a, a hydro test on, on the pipeline. Yesterday and, uh, being Saturday, today is Sunday. So. Yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, they told me they, wait, they waited all the way to 4 o'clock, and they're, oh, hey, by the way, we're working tomorrow. Um, that would have been nice, like yeah. 12 sure. hours or what, you know. It yeah. um, been nice earlier today, but it just didn't happen that way. <clears> and uh, so while I'm watching everyone else and seeing everyone else's pictures, I'm like, well, stuck here so nothing i can really do as of right now until that next job pops up like i said it's going to be in about a couple of weeks so everything's going to start changing for me campaign wise yeah once that job job picks up right so okay i'm excited for well, we'll be watching your progress and and uh do anything we can to help you out hopefully this podcast will help get the word out a little bit Yes, I can guarantee that at least dozens will see it. Dozens, <laughs> if, if not a hundred. Yeah. I hope <laughs> so. so. I hope and, so. Uh, yeah, you're welcome to share it and, and okay. do whatever you need to do. Heck Hang yeah. it on your website or whatever. It's going to help. Yes, sir. Um, so I can't really think of anything else that I, that I need to cover that I haven't covered before. Um, you are a native um, Texan, yes, I Yes, sir. I think uh, I was actually yeah. going through the family tree the other day, and I was asking my mom, and I, I, I went all the way back to like the 1800s. I think I'm like sixth generation Texan. So I was like, I was not expecting that. I thought maybe maybe two or three generations. Yeah. But no, it's mainly my whole family on my mom's cool. dad's side. So yeah. it, uh, awesome. it was awesome to see yeah. that. So a native Texan, hardworking man, Republican, um, has some, some decent, good views. So look him up online, and what's your what's your website address? Jonathan Mitchell for Congress dot com. Jonathan Mitchell for Congress dot com. Yes, sir. And is there a phone number that people can reach you at? I need to add one on there. I just okay. I don't know if I want to go with uh, GoDaddy or go with the Google. Uh, several other people told me to okay. go which way. I just haven't made the uh, uh, 
the decision which okay. one I want right. to go with. Yeah. But it will be up within the week. And then he's, uh, you can look him up at Jonathan Mitchell on Facebook. Yes, sir. And get there. And what about an email address? Email it would be jonathan.a.mitchell at outlook.com. Cool. Okay. Gotcha. This guy's taking donations. He needs $2 million. So uh, we should be able to raise that by what is what time is it? Yeah, we'll have that by. It's four o'clock. I think we can probably have that by about five thirty. Maybe. So yeah, <laughs> good thing start, you came up. <laughs> y'all start dropping money in the bank. All right, guys. Well, I hope that this uh, gave you a little bit of insight into at least one of the candidates. Again, he's uh, uh, Congressional District Eight, Texas, uh, running for Congress. And that's going to be in November, right? For November 2022? Uh, 2022. Yes, sir. That'll be so, the general uh, election. Yeah, general election. Good, good ways out to give you time to follow this man and get to know him. I can tell you from experience, if you give him a call, he'll call you back. Drop an email, he'll email you back. So, again, um, if you're checking this out for the first time, hit like. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. We've got a lot of good videos out here. And uh, for me and Mark Hogan, we're going to call it a day. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank We're you. Out. Thank, Thank you. you for being All here. Right. Thank you, guys.